Good morning, good afternoon, good whenever you guys are watching this. Welcome back to a brand new video of Everyday Crawford EDC for short. And in today's video, we are going to be going over my actual EDC and what I actually carry every day, or at least most days, what ends up in my pocket most of the time. Uh, excuse my hair, I meant to put a hat on. Uh, hey Logan, cut. Alright, and we're back. Today's video, of course, is brought to you by my favorite drink in the entire world, coffee. Dad, I'm going to be a dad here soon. Coffee is <clears throat> probably the most important thing in my life, outside of my wife and our soon-to-be-born child. But let's jump in to my EDC. Let's talk about what I carry every day. Um... Let me see. The first thing that we're going to talk about, I think one of the most important things, at least to me, is going to be your pistol. So I carry a Taurus Millennium G2 with Hornady hollow point rounds. They are my favorite rounds to carry in a self-defense situation. And honestly, this pistol cost me $200. I can't remember the last time I had a misfire on it. I've got it in just a cheap little pouch i mean it fits it but you'll find they don't really make much for tauruses so finding something that fits it you just kind of have to go with the best option but this for me has been my actual edc pistol this whole time if you follow me on instagram you saw my six hour uh p320 i don't really carry that one it's a little bit too big for me it's a little bit too uh, hefty of a boy so this guy is what actually i carry and yeah this generally does stay in my backpack. I take my backpack with me everywhere that I go. Um, and speaking of the backpack, we are going to do an entirely separate video of going over what I carry in my pack. That way I can show you guys all that too. It's a little bit different and a little, lot more stuff in there, in all honesty. But yeah, so that's my pistol. And honestly, for a $200 gun, a lot of people are going to say it's terrible. But it's easy to disassemble, easy to take apart, easy to take care of and clean. And it cost me $200. Which, uh, when I was 21 years old, when I bought this, was very, very nice price. It's a great price. $200 is a great price for any pistol, honestly, as long as it shoots and it's reliable. And so far for me, the Taurus has been exactly that. Uh, going up to the pocket that's right behind my pistol, actually, is my phone. Obviously, my phone, not obviously, but actually, you guys can see it right there. My phone is currently being used to film the top-down view of this. I have a cheap little plastic case on here. It's got the MagSafe technology, which I really, really like. Pop safe, pop socket, wallet on there. I have just recently switched from Android to iPhone. Um, it's been an adjustment period. I think iPhones are good phones. It does a great job of shooting this video. Does it do a much better job than anything else I could have bought? I don't know. In all honesty, I, I really don't know. But it's been a good phone for me so far. I just recently cracked the um, screen protector, so I need to get that replaced. But I really like the MagSafe technology. I need to get some more uh, little features for it, some little stuff that snaps in there. But, yeah, it does a great job. It holds the cards that I need. It keeps my cards right there, makes it really easy to get. And especially as a firefighter, there's a lot of times where we get a call in the middle of the night, say, and... I won't grab my wallet, but I generally always have my phone on me. We may stop and get something to eat after that run, and it's really, really nice to have my wallet and everything else that I might need if we do go out to eat and not have to worry about somebody uh, spotting me for that or you know, not eating with my crew. Um, we actually just the other day went to a restaurant after training, and I'd forgotten to grab my wallet that day, but I had my phone on me, so I had my credit card. So, nice little feature. You always have your phone on you. You can forget your wallet, but you rarely forget your phone. So for me, that's been a really big uh, plus for myself. On the other side of my back pockets, we have my other wallet. And this is going to be a Dango M1, I believe. Uh, future me, editor me, uh, put whatever actual design this one is up there. You can see I've got some cash in there. I've got my cards in there as well as my driver's license and some other uh, cards in here. I've really liked this wallet. Uh, for a long time, I had like a cowboy wallet, you know, the big, tall leather ones. And I found that it just hurt. 
it hurt my butt a lot to be sitting on that, especially uh, when my wife and I first started dating and I was driving an hour and a half a lot. It was a lot to sit on. This is a much slimmer profile. It keeps everything a lot lighter. Um, I have found that it does run a little bit short on credit card um, space. I really don't have many credit cards. I have my debit card and a credit card, but I do have like my EMT license, um, my insurance cards, my health insurance, all that stuff goes in here. And I found that it was just a little bit too thin to accommodate everything I needed. That was why I actually initially bought the PopSocket wallet. It allowed me to put kind of my necess 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 my necess necessary words, English, I English good. It, it allowed me to put those necessary cards in here and like I said, have quick access to them. This one though, a lot of my health insurance stuff uh, stays on this. You see, I got a picture of me and my wife, a picture of my wife with her pregnant belly. And yeah, I really, really like the wallet. I believe it's either titanium or stainless steel. I can't remember off the top of my head. Once more, future me, put it up in the video. Thank you, you're beautiful and you do a great job and your head isn't that big, no matter what your wife says. Get the little lanyard on there to grab it and pull it out if you need to. I've really never had any issues with it. Um, the cards do kind of stick in this front pocket, so it's a little bit hard to get cards out sometimes, but overall, I've been a huge fan. They do make an adapter for this to make it even larger. You can see where you screw it in right here, and you get a leather flap that flops over this, or the other way, I don't know. I don't own it, so I can't say, but that is something that I have looked into getting, and I probably will at some point get that for this. Go ahead. We're going to move up to the front pockets. Let's go to this side first. So actually, funny enough, I realized when I started recording, I actually had one of these in. Um, these are my Bose headphones. I take them with me pretty much everywhere for a long time. I pretty much always had these in my ears. I did not leave the house without them. I still really don't. Um, I don't like taking phone calls and holding my phone to my head. And I absolutely despise speakerphone. So... This allows me a quick, easy way to pop that in my ear, talk on the phone, do what I need to do, as well as the fact that I'm a huge Audible fan. I listen to audiobooks pretty much nonstop. Um, and these are a great way to kind of do that, especially before my car had Bluetooth or anything like that. These were a lifesaver uh, when COVID hit and we all had to wear masks. I was still working retail at the time, and I bought a big balaclava that covered my ears, and I would put my headphones in. And I would listen to audiobooks while I worked on the floor and sold things to people. I'd just reach out, pause it real quick, and help the customer do whatever they needed to do, and then go back to my book. It was really, really nice. I don't think Bose makes this exact headphone anymore. Um, I actually had a guy just ask me two days ago, yesterday. I don't know. Uh, but he just asked me about these, and they're several years old. I bought them for my wife when we first started dating our very first Christmas together. And she really never used them. She doesn't really use headphones a whole lot. So when the pair I had, I had an orange pair, they broke finally after several years of use. She actually gave me hers. And yeah, these are something that never leaves my side. If we talk about EDC, everyday carry items, this is at the top of my list of things that I take everywhere that I go. I don't leave the house without these. Is there anything else in this pocket? Yes, one more item. There's actually one thing in that pocket that goes in the backpack. I just haven't moved it over there yet, so we won't pull that out and talk about it. Um, write in the rain pen. You need something to write with. I carry a write in the rain notepad in my backpack. Once more, we'll cover that later. But I really like these pens. They do a really, really good job of writing on the write in the rain stuff. And if you've ever used it, it's designed specifically to get wet and not run, not tear up. So you need specific pens that are actually good at doing that. And the Right in the Rain pens, they've always done well by me. I had a steel one at one point and I lost it. So my wife actually got me a set of these for Christmas. I absolutely love them. I carry one at work as well because I do have a Right in the Rain notepad on my work uh, blues. Yeah, just a single click. So no side click, no bolt action or anything like that, but you don't really need it. It's a pen, it does the job, it writes. What more could I ask for? All right, that's it for that pocket. We are gonna move on to this one, and I apologize, we're kinda going through these all quick. I don't want this video to be too long, uh, but I do just kinda wanna show you guys what I carry. 
So this is the Olight i5R EOS. So it is the rechargeable version of this. To recharge it, you just take this tail cap off, and pop the battery out, and the battery actually has a little charging port right there. Um, yeah, it's rechargeable. The lumens on it, you got the first phase, which is kind of the light phase. And then click it again, you get to the bright. And this is the one that actually puts out a ton of light. Like this, this thing is, is bright. And the, my favorite thing about it is it's hot. Like this thing gets actually pretty toasty if you're right up on it. Um, I saw a video of a guy melting ice off his wife's car with one of these. He just and heated it up. The only thing that I don't like about this is it doesn't have any memory of where I left it last. So I would like to be able to just single click that and go to the light, the brightest mode. That's really the mode that I use the most, especially if I'm at work. At home, I do use the, the lighter mode quite a bit, especially when I'm coming home from work at like seven o'clock in the morning and I don't wanna wake my wife up, I can come in with this and light my way around the house, let the dog out, all that fun stuff. But I do wish that I had a quicker way to get to this because no matter where you leave it, it always ends up back on the softer. Not really a big thing, but something that I do think about and something that when I get another EDC light, just another one to feature and another one to have in rotation, it'll be something that I look at. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this pocket clip. The pocket clip is nice because it does have this feature on it that allows you actually to clip it to a hat and turn your hat into a headlamp. I like that a lot. That's a cool little feature. The problem that I've had with it is our couch has pretty wide fibers. Like it's pretty wide woven. It's not a very tight weave. And if I'm laying down, what'll happen a lot of times is this will slide underneath that weave. And then if I'm really unfortunate, it'll slide underneath the weave again. And I'm stuck with it all the way here. If it's down here, I just quit. It's a frustration thing more than anything. And it has pulled, you can see the clip sits a little bit far away from the body now. It's pulled the clip out a few times. You can just pop it off and put it back in. But it's not, not fun. And yeah, that's really my main complaint about this is the fact that there's no memory on the tail switch and the fact that this just keeps getting caught in my couch, which you'd think I would learn. Logan, just stop wearing it when you lay on the couch. Easy enough, right? Well, I'm stupid. The last thing that's going to be in this pocket and the last thing... Well, no, there's one more thing after this. Kaiser Sheepdog. Mini Sheepdog? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. Van Vanguard Mini Sheepdog. This is traditionally my most used knife. VG10 steel, G10 handles uh, with a liner lock on there. Re not reversible and not deep carry on the pocket clip. But it does the job for me. I am a huge fan of Warnies, Warncliffs, and Sheep's Foots. And this knife meets that parameter. Very elegant, very beautiful in my opinion. The detent on it is really nice. You don't really get the drop shot action with it, but it takes one halfway decent shape. If I do sideways like that, it takes two. But straight up and down, easy enough. Look at this. Look at this. Get you a little sound action. What do you guys think about that? As far as in the hand, it really is a three finger grip. I can really only comfortably get three fingers on there. Um, if I squeeze up, I can get the fourth. Not really anywhere to get the finger up as far as the finger choil will go, but you do have the sharpening choil, which I always prefer. It's one of my biggest complaints about Spyderco is that they don't do anything like that. Um, easy to sharpen, It's VG, like I said, it's VG10 steel running on ball bearings if I'm not mistaken it's been a while since I've taken this one apart but yeah it's it's a great knife it's done really really well for me yeah, I can get choked up I like the little cutout right here on the on the tip you can get your finger behind there to do any work you need to do makes it really really comfortable to use you know I can grip all the way up and work all I need to with that uh, as far as other knives that kind of regularly end up in my rotation for EDC if you follow me on Instagram, 
Everett Crawford. You should go do that. You'll have seen this several times. The Civivi Thug 2. This thing is buttery smooth. Super easy. Damascus steel. Uh, it says it's a wood handle. I don't know if it's actual wood or a you know, composite wood sort of thing. So I can't say 100% on that. But this thing is buttery smooth. And I love it. And my wife actually picked it out for me as a Christmas gift. So we went and got it after Christmas. She gave me a gift card for it. And yeah, that's been a regular in my rotation. The other one that probably ends up the most is the Berg Blade Iron Pup. I bought this one at Blade Show back in 2019. You'll have seen this one on Instagram as well if you follow me over there. It It's a great little knife. Titanium frame lock, bolster lock titanium bolster lock with carbon fiber scales yeah i love this little knife it's been great to me and super comfortable in hand super comfortable to fidget with yeah those are my knives those are the things that really make up my everyday carry there is one more thing that i almost forgot to talk about and that would be the other apple thing that i used regularly which is the apple watch i got this right when I switched from Android to Apple. Uh, it was probably the biggest thing that convinced me to make the move was the fact that the Apple Watch was the watch that I really just wanted to try out and see what I thought about it. Because I've gone through a lot of different watches. You know, I've gone through everything from you know, Fitbits to uh, Fossils and Misfit back when that was still a brand, Pebble, all those different watches, I went through them all, and for some reason, I just kill watches. I kill smart watches. I just do. I don't know what it is. I'm hard on them. I live a life that's pretty active. I'm moving pretty much nonstop. Blacksmith shop isn't great for knives. Firefighting isn't great for knives. That puts them in a hot environment in and of itself. This guy was specifically made with adventure in mind. It's got a GPS on there. I can pull up a lot of different things. On this, hold on. Y'all don't need to see my passcode. But I can pull up, you know, the compass. I can pull it up real quick here. And see my activity and mindfulness, the weather. I can even do what's called backtrace or backtrack. And it'll actually GPS track where I'm going. And then when I hit the button to stop and run the route backwards, retrace steps, it'll actually guide you back the same route that you came from. I really like that, especially as somebody who enjoys hiking and climbing. That's a cool little feature to have. I like that a lot. That this, I said I wasn't a huge, you know, I wasn't sold 100% on Apple phones. Apple watches, the Ultra specifically, I'm sold. Uh, my wife got me this band for Christmas this year. I believe this is similar, the same style as the, uh, the Alpine, I want to say. She got me a couple different colors. It was this green, a black, and an orange. I've worn the black the most. I just switched over to this green. I really like the orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors. Uh, but I wear this at work, and that orange is not going to stay orange for very long. It's going to get dirty real quick. So I like the green. I like the darker colors because they kind of hide some of the dirt that work's going to put on them. Um, yeah, this has been a great little addition for me to my EDC. I can read my text message. I do have uh, 5G and cellular signal on this, so I can text my wife even if, say, I do forget my phone. Uh, if we get a run or anything like that and I forget my phone, I can text my wife from this, let her know what's going on. And I've got the heart rate monitor on there. I use it to track all my workouts, and it does a really, really good job of that, and it helps motivate me to keep me going, whether that's running, uh, doing a regular old workout, bodybuilding, or anything like that. This thing keeps me on track and it keeps me kind of in the right mindset moving forward. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is my EDC. That is my real everyday carry. This is the stuff that goes with me everywhere that I go. I hope this gives you guys some stuff to think about. I'm not saying go out and buy any of this. This is not, you know, me saying this is the best knife to go with. This is the best phone, the best watch, the best pen, the best headphones, the best flashlight, wallet, whatever. I'm not saying that. This is what I have personally found works for me. If you like what you see, feel free to try some of it out. I don't have any affiliate links. I don't know what it takes to even get affiliate links. But shoot over to Amazon. See if you can find some stuff that you like. 
I think my price ranges were really solid. I honestly think the watch was the most, or the phone and the watch were the most expensive, and then probably the gun. My wallet was 100, 100, maybe 20 for the Bose headphones back then. But everything else on here was 50, 60 bucks. You know, my pens, my light, my knife. Really not a bad deal on a lot of this stuff. If you take out the two big ticket items, not too bad. But hey, I want to thank you guys for being here today. I apologize. The lighting seems to have gotten off a little bit. Probably when I shined a flashlight into the camera, I probably should have reset it. I did. Too bad. It's too late now. We already recorded the video. But thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching this. It means a lot to me. It really, really does. I appreciate the time you take out of your day to spend it with me. And I hope you enjoyed the content that I put out to you. I work really hard on it. And I love what I do. It's a lot of fun to just mess around and do this sort of stuff. It's, it's a good time. And yeah, thank you guys. I love you. And have a good one. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe. Forgot about that. That's a YouTube thing. I'm supposed to say that on YouTube. Bye-bye.